three Billy Joel songs. <laughs> Piano Man, Uptown Girl, terrible. For the Longest Time, even more terrible. Three Elton John songs. Goodbye, Olympic Road, Rocket Man, I'm Still Standing. Three Janet Jackson songs. This is all stuff I didn't listen to. Uh, Control, Black Cat, uh, Rhythm Nation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three Alice in Chains. Well, which albums do you want them off? Do you want them Just off go. Facelift? Do you want them off uh, Man in the Box, Dirt, uh, Junkhead, uh, Wood? I wouldn't even know. Uh, <laughs> There's you could be tons. making stuff up. I, I don't could be know. making stuff up. Yes, we had totally different tastes in music growing up. You had top forty BS, and I had good stuff. Three Adele songs. Hello, Chasing Pavement. Gosh, I don't know the titles. But every time I do the dishes, I listen to Adele. <laughs> sad. I like because I'm just, when I get when I get to do the dishes, I get sad. So I ask the computer or to play Adele. All right. What's the name of our theme song? Oof. I have no idea. Do you? No. Okay. <laughs> let's, I don't know. <laughs> let's but you get show. to hear it right now. Let's start the show. Welcome to Fiber Hustle. Welcome to Fiber Hustle. Hello. My name is Chip. My name is Aaron. I like to quilt. I like to knit and crochet. I forgot what I like to do. <laughs> and you like to watch. You do. Fiber Hustle episode 22. That's 22 in sign language. Uh, okay. I 22. was like, because I just said it. You're like, I didn't know if you're an echo or what was happening. No. Okay. 22. Yeah. So welcome. It's nice to see you. It is good to see you. You all look lovely. And it is March. We have we have the Ides of March. We have March Madness. That's all I know. It's all that happens in March. Um, St. Patty's Day. St. Patrick's Day happens in March. Yeah. Is there anything else? I'm sure you're yelling at the at the screen right now. There's also this. What yeah, but we don't celebrate it here, obviously. I don't think. I don't know what else there is. When is Lent? Didn't that happen already? I don't know. Computer, when is Lent? Lent is this past Wednesday. The next occurrence is on Wednesday, February 17th, 2021. We have time to prepare. There you go. Obviously, we did not do anything for Lent that I know of. Ew, there's a hair on your... That would be... That's beard stuff. That's an eyelash. <laughs> <laughs> that is an eyelash. My false eyelashes are falling out. Wait, this is eyebrow. This is eyelash. Either way, there's all kinds of hair just falling out of my face all the time. <laughs> I, think, I think I wish this would just move up here, but whatever. And it's about time that this is about time to go. I'm noticing it now. It's a little unruly. But you still love me, right? Speaking of unruly... What have you been up to? <laughs> I have <laughs> uh, just you know the visual, usual work the stuff. Visual. Or the visual, the visual, which is uh, the like usual. biz talk. Biz talk. It's I've been talking business. It's all bye 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 bye. Uh, just hanging out and stuff. I haven't done much. I gone to a few men's knit days on Sundays because I haven't been able to make Wednesdays lately because of some work schedules. I did two weeks ago, or was it three weeks ago, went to uh, Red Alder down in Tacoma. Apparently it's a like four or five days of classes that you can sign up for and take it, but they also have a marketplace. So I went down a couple of Saturdays ago because I knew uh, Solar Lucy, Hello, Lucy. Uh, she's been a subscriber since probably day one. And she's she been watching us. She is one us. of the OGs. Yes, originals. And she said, hey, I'm going to be down there. You should try to make it down. I said, 
okay, I will. So Tacoma's probably 45 minutes from us. And Lucy, I will have to say, I didn't go because I heard it's all knitting and I was like, nope. But she wanted to meet the gentleman of Fiber Hustle, not just Fiber. She wanted the hustle there too. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Chip was unable to make it. So I went down, met her. She was just as lovely as when we talked through the Instagram. It was super nice hanging out with her. And um, she got us gifts. She did. We got some gifts. And very nice ones. Very generous um, gifts. She got me this skein of yarn, which is Mountain Colors hand painted yarns. It looks like they're out of Montana. And I think the color or base is barefoot. Growl. And the colorway is gray wolf. Mysterious, Whoa. but no, this is a fingering weight and it's dark, but there's tons of dark greens, maroons, and blues in there. Let's see if you can see it in the camera, which I don't know if there's that big a delay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Isn't that just gorge? And uh, it's very fluffy because it is 60% superwash wool, 25% mohair, and 50% nylon. So I'll probably oh, use nice. it. It's very nice. I'll probably use it in uh, some kind of shawl situation or something like that because <laughs> a, shawl a, a shawl situation. I'm having a shawl situation because you know me and not my hatred of socks. Just I tried socks. It's just don't like don't let your stubble rip it up. No, I'm not. That's why I was padding. Okay. Yes. It's like apple. Can I um, handle it? No, you cannot. That's enough of that. So yes, we all know what happens when Chip unravels things. And look at this. And I got a hat. She knitted this hat. I know it's a tin cans knit pattern, and I think it is. What pattern is this? Did I write it down? How do I wear it? I don't know where it is. I wrote it down. It's, it's probably the Snap Hat by Tin Can Knits, and it's a marled hat where you hold two fingering weights together and you knit it up, and it looks fantastic. She finished it the night before I saw her. It was a little damp. She goes, I'm sorry, I tried to block it. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm surprised she even tried to block it. But yeah, so you can, uh, unless you put a pom-pom on it, you're supposed to wear it with the garter on the outside, or you can reverse it and wear it with the stocking Is that what I'm doing now? You Yes, this, you're wearing it correctly with the garter. Lucy, thank you very much. And it's just not about the materials, it's about the time, the thought. Oh yeah, she took time. That is so sweet of you. She's like, I know Chip sews and she didn't know what to get you, because she said sewing stupid. <laughs> just in case she did not say that. I made that up for, yes. She I'm so sure sweet. she did say that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Lucy, no. don't make me find you. <laughs> <laughs> so no, uh, hung out with her for a little bit. Saw my friend Chris who was working a booth. Saw some other people. What was interesting is upstairs, when we took an elevator and a little bit around, they had like, I think it was two tables, giant tables set up. And they had all these pictures of sheep with a little, I'll insert a little bit of video here. Uh, told you what the sheep's name is, where they came from, and basically you could feel the texture of right when they were sheared, the texture of when they were knitted up, and when they what they feel like when they're in a hank or skein. It was just very interesting to feel like some of these sheep had very, very rough, you would never want to put it yeah, on your skin. Then like obviously when we got to the merino wool and stuff, it felt glorious. There were some sheep that looked like they were from a totally different planet and I don't understand how I never seen them before and they probably came from a totally different planet. Or Did you here. guys know that <clears throat> a sheep can have like four horns? Four horns sticking out of its head. I mean it looks so sci-fi. I like those should be inspirations for like some kind of I think sci-fi movie or something. So when he came home I heard two things. Solar Lucy mm -hmm. and this table because he was so excited that he got to see the steps that were involved in like yeah, processing just like, it the was wool. Just, yeah, the processing the wool, like from shearing to skeining to hanking to... But it was very apparently Pacific Northwest because you had the headshot uh, <laughs> of the particular sheep in question. Some sheep were more like this. It's local... And, you know, you could you could bond with it. I, there's probably some kind of letter writing campaign that Pro you could do probably, yes. with your sheep. Let it know how the scarf is hanging. <laughs> now, once we finished that, we went downstairs. And I think that's where I started, not, not to lose her. But after I touched all that stuff, I'm a little bit of a 
germaphobe when it comes to things. You lost and the, you. Uh, not Lucy. Like, not lo lost her, but I was like, the whole time she's like, oh, we were talking more. And I'm thinking, I got to wash my hands. I got to wash my hands. Because everybody is touching this stuff. And I was just like, I got to get to the bathroom real quick. I go, excuse me for a minute. Washed up, came back. Just because everybody was touching this stuff. After your bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the cleanest person in the world. Whatever. Next segment. There could be <laughs> a buck fifty and quarters on the floor. He would never know it because he doesn't look down. I'm a very tall man. And if something, dro if something drops, I'm like, oh, it's too far away to care about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, if it's not a 10 or a 20, it's probably going to stay there for a it's while. Gonna, it's going to grow. <laughs> it's gonna, yeah, eventually I'll have enough money for the vacuum at the car wash. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's the dollar. Yeah, but no, Lucy, it was great meeting you. Um, I need to check out uh, Red Alder more next year and see if there's any classes I want to take. Um, I know these... one night they had like a disco dance and a bunch of people like crocheted up some pants and stuff and wore them. Aww. And it just looked like they had some different things at night that looked like it was kind of fun. So was it multiple classes going on? Yeah, I think so, yes. At the same time? Yes. So there's many instructors. Yeah, there was, uh, I know Harry Wells was there. That's the only one I know. But I looked at some pictures of other people that are doing classes and there was a lot. When I went into this hotel, it was at a hotel, uh, kind of a swanky hotel. But when I got in there, there was just people kind of scattered all through the hotel that were uh, knitting, and that weren't in classes. But no, next year I might have to see if there's any classes I want to take. So. And did you and uh, Lucy take a class together or you just met up? We just met up at the marketplace. We did do some uh, photo sessions together. We kind of had a little... A little pose off. Oh, I thought we were like at the prom. We should have done a prom picture. Uh, and why would I be like there... this at the prom? I don't know. Because I didn't want to touch the girls or what? <laughs> like, don't touch Germaphobe, me. Germaphobe, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Chip, what have you been up to? So I have been um, deep, deep, deep in a pile of nothing. I can confirm this as fast. So I have been in a, in a creative rut, and it's, I don't know how to explain it other than I want to create things that for my own excitement and my own, like, I want to wow myself. And I just hadn't been, like, jazzed. And I feel guilty because I have uh, UFOs, and I'm like, eh, I don't want to do those now. I don't want to. I don't want to work on those. But then I feel guilty for wanting to start anything else. So it's kind of been like it's got to be really worth it if I'm going to sidestep the the UFOs. But I haven't really found anything that was really spinning my spinning my wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not, that's not right. Uh, getting me going. But I will say that I'm excited to announce that I am going to be. Y'all know I had an art in installation oh, again. at my on my campus at work. They all got the Christmas card. And so I am a now a resident artist. I'm considered an artist who is a resident, a resident artist, if you will. When he wakes up in the morning, now he goes, "Time for the resident artist to go to work." <laughs> So I have been invited to participate in planning the upcoming Pride art installations. And so uh, as a resident artist, I'll say that one more time, you know, I do have the opportunity to try to make something. And no, really, I'm excited because it's all about Pride and I'm not sure. I'm very open to whatever the, the direction is that they're going to be. Um, saying, hey, this is the theme. So rather than just making something that I think of or I want to come up with um, for Pride Month, I'm going to try to say, hey, how can my art complement yeah. what their theme is this year? Do you, you guys don't walk in the parade or anything, do you? Yes. Yes, you do? Uh -huh. Yes. So there's a, there are, there's a big contingent that goes. Okay. Yeah. My company also walks in the parade. We walk. Last year you didn't walk. I think no. we weren't feeling well, but I've walked the last... Three years, and you went twice with me. Yep. And, yeah. So, can you believe it? It's already March, and we're already thinking about, like, summer activities. That's three months away, though. So, it's sound, well, it, it, for it, us. It needs to happen. Seattle's Pride is at the end of June, and it's 
so huge. It's like, we went a couple years ago, we walked in the parade, my company puts on the parade. So we walked and we finished, we went and hung out around Seattle Center, literally four hours. And when we left the, sorry, left the Seattle Center, the parade was still going on. That's how big it is. It's like, and we're like, hours. Bye. Yeah, we're like, I'm like, done in the sun, time to go. So, yeah. yeah. So I've got that to look forward to, that meeting I'm having tomorrow. Are you thinking quilt or what are you thinking? I have no idea. So just, I have no adding idea. Adding your, what do you call yourself again now? I'm a resident artist. Right, as you, as adding your resident artistry to mm. your company's. I'm sharing my gift. <laughs> share it with me, then you share it there. It's all shared. Good times. Great. What are you going to do? A pair of socks? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'll tell you that. I'm not going to do socks. Eventually, gang, I'll finish socks, but I'm doing what I enjoy what right now. One pair of socks. That's all I want. I could probably make you socks much easier because we have about four inches difference oh, in please. foot size. You talk like I'm from Middle Earth, but my feet are like this big. <laughs> you got these little guys. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. All right. I'm so okay. that's kind of what we're up to. That gets you gets you to today. Today. Aaron. Yes. You made that? <coughs> there it is. I made that cough, which is great. There it is. So I made and made and made, and then I got confused on what to make, so I made more. Um, Stash busting from last episode. I told you I was kind of stash busting and going through things. So there was a point after our last episode, I was like, I don't know what I want to make. And we're kind of like, eh. And I didn't want it to sit there. Do you ever knit things just to knit things? And I, yeah, that's why I did. Anyways. Well, it's such a mindless activity, isn't it? <laughs> and watching Netflix for a month and a half, isn't it? <laughs> you funny. But anyways, I was like, if I'm just sitting there not knowing what to knit, I will make some hats for the homeless. Uh, I've made a couple. I will show you right now. This is Pearl Soho's classic cuff hat. Again, Pearl Soho, classic cuff hat. I think went into my stash, and again, most of my stash isn't labeled. So this was, I think, Red Heart. I don't know which Red Heart it was with Love or Super Saver, but it actually feels soft. It's not like... No, it's nice. It feels good. It just feels like cotton. So I am going to donate this to the shelter. If you, it's a free pattern, again, Pearl Soho. And there's many different sizes from infant to child to adult, teenager, big man. A little big bit. Big man. For everybody. Yeah, a little bit for everyone. And it's pretty easy. I think it takes a US size five and US seven needles. I don't know what that means because I was taught by Canadians on YouTube. So everything I do is millimeters. So I think five is a 3.75 millimeter just for the cuff. And then uh, the rest of it, I think okay, is that's gonna bug seven. me. Fix my hair. Oh, there's no fixing that. I know. I, what, it, what am I doing? It's got some weirdness going on. No! I don't understand what you mean to fix it. <laughs> just forget do it. Do you want me to get a time machine back to like 1973 yes. and do something? I think it looks fine. Well, now I fixed it. Well, everybody was focusing on me, and you got jealous, so you <laughs> had to take your everybody's eyes to you. Tell me about your lovely hat. The one I just finished talking about because you're too busy I with your hair? I love this because who doesn't need a basic solid in their wardrobe? This is going to the homeless. Exactly. <laughs> a basic solid. Okay. It will do anybody justice. It will. So, yes, I'm donating to this... I'm donating would, uh, to this shelter. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I actually would like one of these. I can make you one. We can, we can pick out colors from my stash or we can find something or whatever. You would like one. You know what, Mr. Connor? Sorry. I found in this house a hat that looked like it was bought at the store a couple days ago. I'm sure you did. Where did this hat come from? The store. You have someone who makes hats in this house all the time. I don't. I, did, I haven't bought a hat in years. All right. Well, then there's a mystery hat that you must have worn and haven't showed me. Yeah, yet. really. I haven't. I haven't bought any hats. Okay. Good times. Love you. I had to buy socks. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 
Oh, okay. And then I made a Rafa hat. It's a free pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And I think I made this before. And this is made out of, I think this is an old, like again, I was stash diving, an old Lion brand wool ease. Cause I don't think they even have this label anymore, but maybe I am incorrect. But it looks like it's 80% acrylic and 20% wool. And it's fabulous. I'm not going to put it on my head since I'm donating it. But um, it's basically, if you love one by one ribbing, this is the hat pattern for you. And then uh, certain sections, you're going to knit a whole row and then purl a row. This is with 3.75 millimeter needles. And for both of these, I used my Licky nine inch circulars. And uh, I like these needles. I use them whenever I do hats, probably because they are nine inch and it's easy for me to do a hat. Speaking of the Rafa hat, there is some new gentlemen in town on the YouTube game. And I know Kevin just made one. Needles at the ready. Uh, Kevin started the podcast. This is their, they're on their fourth episode, Needles at the Ready. The first two episodes, Kevin did himself. And then <laughs> Kevin did himself. And then he bought Ray over so they could do it together. So, and, and I think it's working much better as a duo because I like duos. Well, I think it's so much easier when you've got someone to play off. Yes. And it's, it's kind of nice because way. it's like they both have different um, skill levels or comfort levels with their makes. And so it's kind of like, it's a great conversation starter. Yeah. So uh, check out Needles at the Ready. They only have four episodes up, so you can just binge right through them. And, Very uh, nice. Yeah, um, they are northeast polite I think they've gentlemen, got, I think and we are northwest, and this is what northwest is. So that would be their northeast, and that's northwest. Yes, that way is northeast. Yes. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> But no, Kevin and Ray, they seem very nice. And it seems like we're kind of crossing over things that we are making because I've made some things that I've seen on their channel. I think they, have, I think they have obsessive compulsive issues. Why is that? They like to binge. <laughs> they like to binge. Oh, because they, they were binge watching some of they're, our, let's said they were binge watching some I, of our stuff. I am the same way. If there's something, like, I will put all of my focus in that. And then, like, I look up and I'm like, oh, what time is it? But, like, I like to... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we're everybody's... Who doesn't like to... Actually, Who doesn't want to watch Fiber Hustle all the time? It is my favorite show. It is. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It's voted number one podcast on our street. <laughs> there's only two houses on our street, so we feel pretty good about it. <laughs> um, no, but we live in binge culture now. We do. So... What that's, else a, that's, been... a, that's a great story. But yeah, check out Needles at the Ready. This is the Rafa hat, Rafa hat by Hohi Locatelli free pattern. And this is also a free pattern by Pearl Soho. It is the cuff hat, cuffed hat pattern. Uh, scrap yarn I made. I'm not going to spend much time on this, but for those who've been watching the show, uh, a couple months ago I made, obviously a couple months ago, I made a fall wreath. Then I made a Christmas wreath, and this is my winter wreath. Um, go back in time and watch the episode, other episodes, kind of how more how I put them together. But uh, these are all filled with crumpled paper from leaflets and just junk mail that comes. Wrap it, glue gun. You can let it go. Hercules, Hercules. And then uh, to be thrifty, I took out the uh not only is it scrap yarn yes. but then he repurposed the wreath dec uh decorations that came before yes this i wreath. took these out he of the stole. christmas i stole because i give it a little like you know when it snows you get that little bit of sparkle that's what i was kind of going for but yeah so not only i mean that is like cheaper than cheap cheaper than cheap <laughs> <laughs> yes and i th i don't know if i'm gonna make a spring one because i'm out of i'm pretty much out of scrap yarn so well, you can make, go to Joanne's, Aunt Joanne's. With a co coupon? With a coupon. I have a coupon for you. I actually have a gift certificate. 
uh, oh. gift certificate that you can use. You can get enough to make more of your more, more, hats. More. Yes, more hats. More uh, hats for the homeless. And then you can also get some spring colors. Yeah. I need to drop these off soon, though, because winter's almost over. I've got all kinds of plans for you. I can't wait to. But yeah, that is uh, some more stash busting I'm doing. And this is going to be a very heavy Aaron episode. If you make a heavy joke, it's going to be a very... Okay, so here's another thing I made. I Last time we podcasted, I said I wanted to do a knit along. That knit along has come and gone. Successfully. Successfully. It was fun. Completed. It was successfully completed. We had 331 people participate. We participate. 31 people participate. I actually wrote a three in there. 31 p people participate, and we all worked on the Paris Toujours Shaw by Isabel Kramer. It is a paid-for pattern, and we had so much fun with it. We People would use the tag Fiber Hustle in Paris on Instagram, and then we had a Fiber Hustle in Paris Facebook page where we can go in there, make comments, share our pictures, uh, support people. The biggest thing with this was people forgetting yarn overs and I think everybody forgot a yarn over one in time so they had to rip back. But uh, it just made me feel really good that we were able to do this together. A lot of people said they actually felt like they were involved for the first time in a knit along, which is good because it was small anyways. So it's, I could pay attention a little bit better. Um, but here's mine. This again, sorry, is uh, the Paris Toujours Shaw by Isabel Kramer. Put it down right here. And there's a little bit of sparkle from the wreath over there. And it's just an amazing pattern. This is Gray Drizzle Fibers yarn. And this is her Merino Storm base in the color of Raspberry Lambic. L-A-M-B-I-C. Lambic? Lambic. You guys, her yarn is so amazing. So if you go to graydrizzlefibers.com, I said .com, www.graydrizzlefibers.com. There's three W's. <laughs> graydrizzlefibers.com. Uh, some of her sock bases are just simply amazing. They're just so vibrant and awesome. And I loved this color as well. For some reason, I've been attracted to reds, and I have really nothing red in my wardrobe. So I did that. And I think... Everybody so much who did the knit along with me. I wish I could name you all, but some of you probably don't want to be named anyways. We kind of made it a safe space so people that don't usually share pictures of themselves wearing the shawl, they uh, did that, and that made me super happy as well. But I'm loving this thing anyways. It's like my blue one, only red, and, and I'm the envy of everybody on the block. Am I covering the mic? I don't believe so. Okay. I put it on very badly, but yeah, it looks really good, so. No, it drapes nicely. Um, I would think a, um, a shawl of that size, you have options if you want more of your back covered, you have, or if you want it more of a, you know, you're looking for a look. <laughs> Quite a look. <laughs> um, yeah, it drapes wonderfully. It, when I, and is that the power it grew like the, a foot when I blocked it. Is that the power of the, because it's, so, I mean, this really feels supple. Like, it's very soft. Yeah. This yarn is just amazing. I saw it at a trunk show that she was having, and I had to have it. And I never wear shawls like this, but it's a little chilling. I, I would at work. Would you really? Yeah. Yeah, I usually just wrap it around me, and I wear it at work because I work on the cold floor now. Thank God. And it feels good. But, yeah, thanks, everybody, for joining my Fiber Hustle in Paris knit along and maybe we'll do one some other time it was like the most low pressure knit along ever we gave it a month some people finished in like a week some people still aren't finished and that's fine if even if you're doing it oh there's no set rules yes tell us about the 12. the 12. yes yes so during the knit along process a uh, instagram person named jane who is one of our friends now reached out to us and she goes, hey, I have a present for you. And I was like, well, how's that gonna work? Then I found out that she lived in Kirkland. So she dropped off some stuff at Serial Knitters. I went there to pick it up and she magically was there doing some knitting. And uh, she got me this cute, it's not gonna show up right here, so we'll do this. 
It is a little Eiffel Tower with a little red thing. What is it? What do you bead? Which kind of matches my shawl anyways. It's a stitch marker. But she also got 12 more if I wanted to do, uh, give them away. And she said, I don't know how you want to do it, but maybe the first 12 people who finished the shawl and posted a picture, you can give it to that, give it to them. So I'm going to go back through and see, like, I think I'm going to do it whoever, like, communicated the most during the knit along on Facebook and who, uh, some of the people who finished first kind of give it away. This means nothing to you if you haven't finished it or I don't reach out to you. It's just the first few people who I see finished it. I'm going to reach out and send you a stitch marker. Thank you, Jane, so that much. That was is very generous. That was very unexpected. generous. Like, I could have just got one, and she got a bunch more for other people. And I don't – last time I checked Instagram, I didn't see a picture of her finished one. So, Jane, if you're watching this and you don't want to post a picture of it, send me a picture through DM, and we'll see – I want to see what it looks like. And you are way out – there it is. I think it's awesome. But yeah, they're little stitch markers. That's awesome. It went with the theme, and I used it when I was knitting this after I got it. So this is what I'm learning is that... Knitters are generous? Knitters are generous, but it's when you're able to do whatever it's an along, so a knit along, a sew along, it really is a great way um, of making friends and new acquaintances. Um, it's... It makes me happy. Uh, there's people that you can learn from, mm -hmm. that you you know you share support, and the first one that I um, was involved with was last year with Allison Allison Glass Trinket So Long, which, if it wasn't for that, Johan. Oh, Johan. Johan is my best Judy when it comes to quilting. Um, he's just a friend now. He's even a friend he, now. It's like you don't even when you don't even. I've never seen him before in real person, real life, but, but it's, he's just a friend now. It, yeah, it's, I feel like he's just like as much as a, a presence in my life that somebody I see on a daily basis. It's like Zach Stout. Him and I probably talk almost every day, and we even have uh, virtual knit nights sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, this is weird. Well, so that works. speaking of Allison Glass, she is doing another sew along. And that's going to start on March 22nd, going through May 31st. So plenty of time to tackle. That's two, yeah, two months. The mini quilt series. If you recall, I was going to do these for uh, Christmas ornaments and decided that I didn't want to just d d dedicate myself to just making these. Like, I wanted to see more progress, but she's doing another sew along. And this time, um, if you sign up and you participate, the bare minimum would be do eight of these and then make them into whatever project that you, that you care to. These are all paper pieced. So you're gonna sew on some paper and you're constantly flipping your paper back and forth. If you do at least one of each, eight, Within that time frame, you'll also get, uh, regardless, you'll get another mini pattern that is has not been made for re, uh, for resale, and so it's only for those who are participating. You're going to get a bonus block, and if you finish all eight, you get a finisher pin. That's fun. Yeah. So I I, I love. I have a finisher finisher pin for my uh, tr trinket sew along. So this is like no pressure. If you're able to do that, hop on over to allisonglass.com. Um, .com. www. www. Uh, uh, you can post an I'm in on your Facebook and or Instagram and just sign up and you can do the, the so long. What are you thinking about making? So, okay. So that's the kind of cool thing. People... Uh, in the past with these minis uh, because there's different sizes that you can make. You can make this, like I think this is the minimum size, but I think you can go up to seven inches per block. Some people have made pillowcases. Some people have made tote bags. Some people have made embellishments for whatever other project that they're making. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just got to, I just like... Put that on the back of a jean jacket. 
<laughs> but th- that'd be a big jean jacket for your for your rebel gang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the AG <laughs> Allison Glass gang. That'd be cool. I mean, I would love to have our pillows that we don't have covers for. Oh my god, covers for that and the socks. <laughs> If you put pillowcases on those pillows I've been wanting pillowcases on for a year, I will do a pair of socks. Any color I have or I want? Any color that I previously owned. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, no, no, okay. Um, we'll see what's going on. <laughs> That's my line. That's my tag <laughs> phrase. Yeah, so uh, if you're interested, I would love... I'm, th- I'm okay, so I haven't published that I'm in yet. Oh, uh, okay. But putting it out there that this is going on, um, and if this is great for beginners, if you've never uh, quilted before, if you've never paper pieced, this is a very good really even introduction. if it's so small. Even if it's so small. Uh huh. Yeah. So like this was just one that I had done, it's and. Gorgeous. Like, this is, uh, uh, I should say, it's a um, it's a collaboration between Allison Glass and Juicy Juice. So, Juicy Juice, it's his fabric that's on these pictures. I love his fabric. Um, things he designs. But if, I don't think you have to use his fabric. I mean, well, this would not. be another great way to stash bust. So, if you only want to pay and get the patterns, um, yeah, do it. I wholeheartedly I love support it. you. Um, more than likely, I will do this. I just, now all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, well, how would I put them together? Like, am I going to do one of each? You like, like two of each? Now, do you have to post every week like you did last year when you did the trinket so long? Uh, like each block? I don't, know what the, I don't know what the rules are yet. You didn't get the specifics yet? Uh, uh, no, so the rules are all there. She, the, Allison Glass and team... Uh, they put together a very, very low pressure, clearly um, directed uh, sew along. And it's not to the point where you're like, too long, didn't read. It's very, very, very easy. I did try the other one last year, not naming any names. And I was like, this woman is so picky that it just, it sucked the fun out of it. So, no. Uh, yeah, so, some things, it's like too many rules and yeah, I don't want to be involved. Yeah. So, Not that we're breaker of rules. So. Try that. Now, I do have one more other thing. Or do you have more? I made that. That's all that I've made that? You made that? That's all I have. Okay, well, I've got something exciting I want to share. Oh, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have been asked to oh, try okay. out a product. It's called... Uh, Fabric of the Month Club, and it is by Darn Good Yarn. Now, the box actually says all about the Darn Good Yarn, but for me, it's all about the fabric. So you can try a subscription service, which will offer you four fat quarters per month. And the cool thing is it comes with not only the fat quarters, but then it comes with a uh, enough or you get five yards of a, um, sa- it's called a five yard sample card. And this is of their fabric, all hand dyed in the, here in the US. And you could use this for your binding or possibly Uh, depending on what you wanted to make, your sashing, or what have you. Now, with the club, you actually get... 100% cotton. It's 100% cotton, hand-dyed, and you get a little instruction card. You have a choose-your-own-adventure. Either you can do, with each month, you'll get enough to do one block... And it's a 12-month block, which actually 12, um, so 12 different uh, boxes that you'll get throughout the year. And then eat, it winds up being 48 blocks. So this is a, uh, an ombre rainbow quilt, that, and I'm really attracted to 
uh, the, the design. Very, very pretty. Comes with, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skip it, but it comes with the instructions. And then if you're not wanting to do uh, a quilt over a year, then each month it'll come with uh, another alternative pattern that you can use that'll take one month's worth of fabric. So the nice thing is, and actually I'm gonna open this, it's really, it really is soft, and each one is, I don't want to cut this. So you can untie it. But it's a knot. No, um, you can untie knots. <clears throat> but I get it, some knots are harder than others. Yeah, I actually, I think it's really, I, I think the way that they've packaged this and wrapped the yarn is really cute. Fabric. Fabric. You said yarn. Yarn. Okay. <clears throat> so. Easy peasy. That's cute, cute little hand detail. But the way that they've it's like they folded, folded, it's like it origami. Over, yeah. So you get, this is the Let's go. first month, and this is actually January. I got it uh, a couple weeks ago, um, but this would be the first kit of the year. And you may want to reach out to Darn Good Yarn and say, hey, I want to do this. And I'm considering doing this as a sew along uh, as a side hustle. So I'm going to take their instructions and do whatever little side video of actually making it and maybe we can make it together. Um, got the fabric and it's got, well, so even we have a lot of light in here. This has a really pretty sheen on it. And they do say color will vary. So I'm sure that they're most hand dyes are yeah. going to vary a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So it's very pretty. I smelled it it's, already. It smells good. <laughs> yeah, it smells right. Yeah. So it's very, very soft and it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel um, crisp right now. So I think when, as I'm using it, I would probably iron and starch it um, just so that I know that I, it's more sturdy as I'm sewing it. But if it feels like this now, then... You know, I'll put probably some color catchers in when I when I go to wash it. Yeah, makes sense. But I totally, totally, I'm excited about it. You know, I had never done uh, a, a monthly subscription service. And to be honest, I don't even know if they're, you know, what the plan is, is whether we're, we're going to do this every month. I'm actually thinking about um, paying to continue this because I like so far I like the colors I like the fabric and I didn't even know they had a fabric <laughs> thing obviously we know darn good yarn from yeah so some so yarn darn, subscriptions kind of weird not weird but well it's funny because it's it's um here it is fabric but the company is I think their first love is yarn so they do yarn of the month boxes and then they also do um some sari um, skirt wraps mm -hmm. uh, every month so we've got an affiliate link that you can try out and there's a couple of different options you can subscribe monthly and just pay as you go I think it's like $20, $20 plus shipping and then if you do uh, the annual subscription then they you don't pay for shipping okay uh, subscription but you still pay monthly even though you've signed up for the year, I think maybe maybe they have it on auto. I haven't I haven't learned that much yet, but we do have a link if you want to try this out. Let's try the uh, the sew along. I can either do it by myself, you, you know, have you guys do it. Um, I'm gonna check it out. Mm. I've never done that before. Mm. So you would go to if you're interested. Uh, it's a no. Go to the affiliate link down here. I don't. I don't actually have it. Okay. Yeah. And so they're out of New York. Uh, and then I think you may even get fifteen percent off your first order. Ooh. So darn good yarn. Check them out. Aaron. Yes. What do you got next? Well, are you sure you don't want to talk about anything else while you're on a roll? What do you mean? It's your turn like an elephant in the room what no let's not talk about that even though it's right behind us i said good day sir
<laughs> Don't look at this surprise yet. Okay, so yes. So <laughs> for Valentine's Day. I know that day. So Valentine's Day, um, mind you, I have been feeling like just uninspired and wasn't sure what to make, which is another reason why I think I'm kind of drawn to this. And I'm drawn to the Allison Glass is because don't overcomplicate it. Just somebody's already picked out the materials. Somebody's already picked out the pattern. And it's almost like a task for you. It's already laid out there. Don't, you know, just, you have five minutes, go sew. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I think this is more my speed right now. <laughs> but, uh, so, you know what's really, really great for, val that? for Valentine's Day? Amazon wish oh, list. Yes, yes. Go say something else, but yes. Amazon wish lists. Uh, so yeah, so for Valentine's Day, Aaron got me a book, and it's called Infinite Red and White Quilts Infinite Variety. This book is a gorgeous, game-changing, for me personally, a game-changing uh, resource to have in the house. It's nothing but a coffee table book. It is three, how many are there? There are, on my notes, 600, Aaron, 650, wow. Aaron, 653 different quilts in here, all of which are red and white. There was an 80-ish year old woman back in 2011 who over her life had amassed this huge and curated this huge quilt collection she would get them at rummage sales she would get them at antique stores like she didn't necessarily know the origins of all of her quilts but she just picked them up little by little because she just adored them and appreciated them so for her 80th birthday i think it was her 80th birthday she her husband asked her what did he want or what did she want for her birthday and she said, you know what? I'd love something that I've never seen in my life before and a gift for the, the city of New York. So she worked with, they worked with a museum to display all of her red and white quilts. This book is the culmination of that project. And that, to me, this just, it just blows me away. I'm going to show it right here, but wow. This show just was so, so beautiful. And what I love about this is that they've done such a great job in just showing off all of the different red and white quilts. And I came across this one. And I'm like, what I really loved about this was that I was able to just by seeing things in two colors and for some reason I was already drawn to the red and white theme because we, I had so much fabric and I was like okay just seeing all of these all of these quilts in just red and white it helped me see past someone else's creativity when it comes to like patterns and all that where I'm just getting to the basic blocks and then I came across this one and I was like I absolutely love that and it looked challenging to me because of each of the intersecting points. Like this is this is not necessarily, I think, a beginner quilt because it's like, I would say it's intermediate. You really want to make sure that your points are all coming together. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I ripped apart this one. Yeah, a few. I've because heard. it's like I would unpick because it was like I wanted it. I wanted these to match. Now, in no shape of the imagination, this would never fly in a quilt show or for, for any kind of competition, but it was really, really challenging. So this, what's interesting about this book is again, it never uh, credits any of the, uh, the makers. There's no names. Like she had to come up with a name for each of these, like, and she would go by, um, the type of, of block that's been incorporated. So there's no patterns. There's like, 
this is just you're getting the art itself. Yeah. And so what's crazy, not crazy, what was fun for me is like dissecting this and figuring out how do I replicate this? So it was like, I took out my little measuring tape and I'm like, okay, this is this. I think that I can make that work. And actually that's when, you know me, I, I love my AccuQuilt. And so like I would take for here, I could see, oh, well, this right here is the kite die. And then these corners are like these triangles on either side was this. So I'm able to kind of just put it together myself. So I had the kite and I had the adjoining triangles. And then I was like, okay, with my eight inch block, then I would use the, is it not on this one? It, I would use this, the two and a half by four and a half finished um, rectangle that would be in the middle here. So it was just fun figuring out, okay, how many pieces do I need? And what sizes do I need? And between, I mean like this is nothing but chock full of inspiration. So- Oh, that one's gorgeous. It, I mean like, actually this is the die I just ordered. Oh, that'd be nice if you made that one. I just ordered this die. I like kind of this off white color it has instead of like super bright white. Yeah, so that was another thing is that I was not buying any fabric. I used, actually, I'm almost out of white. Wow. Yeah, so this is gonna be on the back. This is gonna be um, red on the back. I wonder how that's gonna change the white then. Like well, what there's cotton. Do? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, the batting? The batting. Look at me. Yeah. I'm a quilter. So what's fun about this, I mean like these are just nothing but tessellations. So repeating shapes and it's, it's geometric. It's just, it keeps repeating. And like for me, like this is the actual block. And then, oh, well, then I start seeing. I see, every O's. time I look at it, something different. I see O's and then I see this X, but then I also see um, here that octagon. Yeah. You know, so like that's what, that's the fun in like the, the tessellations. And so thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, heart? Ah. Um, yeah, I mean like it's just this, by just stripping it down into two colors, and I, I like you, I appreciate the antique yeah. More of like maybe a coffee uh, or tea stained. Um, when it's time to get more fabric, then I'll, I'll do that. Um, yeah. Like even though like a wagon wheel. Well, I looked at this book before Christmas. I think even before it was on your wish list. I looked at this and some, is it Geet or Geet quilts? Uh, I, I think I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I forget what this is. Yeah, so the, it's the yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Southwest, uh, Southeast. Um, Giesbend. Giesbend quilts, books. And I was going to get you one or other than other things came up, then this was on your wish list, so I said yes. Okay. So one more thing that I'm going to show you that um, I think is interesting about using this book. So it's not just about like, hey, can I replicate this? But then how, that, that thing, that is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Plays the eyes. Once in my life, I will do this. Do it. I just, I, th I think it's amazing. So I'm trying to get a pattern that it might work. Okay, so this is, this is a good um, example. You can grab a mirror and then you can, you can start going through. Do you wanna lift it up a little bit? So I don't know how this is gonna work. Like that. Yeah, so you could actually play with the mirror and just say, okay, what if I did this? And then like start seeing other things that are possible that you can't really, maybe your mind can't imagine those kind of things, but it's like, then it becomes more of a kaleidoscope. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, like I really intend, let's try it again. Yeah. So like I intend to just keep playing and playing 
with the different patterns that I see here. And then it's like, how can I build on that? How can I change? Like on this one, I was thinking, oh, I would love to have a human, like an embroidered human heart with a dagger going through it and blood dripping. And like, I wear, like this to me is more traditional. And then I wanted to meet where traditional meets art. Yeah. It's more of an art piece than yeah. let's get under and snuggle. Yeah. So that like, this is the kind of stuff I think about. And it's like, I like, once you got me this book, within a day, I was ready to sew again. Nice. Because I was so inspired. Now, are you on a red and white kick? Or are you gonna do another one after this? And are you gonna quilt this one? I'm gonna quilt this one. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm gonna continue with, I mean, I've got a lot of the red and white. So like. Um, it's your thing, it's your thing. It can, be, it can be your thing. It would be nice to be like, oh, okay, this was my red and my, oh, that's classic. Um, Resident artist, chip, red and white period. <laughs> yes. Right? This was the, you know, I mean, like you think of, um, uh, who is it? With the, the, the artist. Oh, that one. Klimt. Klimt. Right? When yes. you say it, it's like, oh, it was during his gold period. You're like, oh, this is classic chip in his red and white Classic Banksy or Chip Connor. I don't know which one it is. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Chip. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, like this. If you don't already have it, put it on your Amazon wish list. <laughs> it just might come to your house. It just <laughs> might come to your house. Bump it up to the top of your list because it's a good resource. And it's like I like the fact that it'll make you think because you don't have the pattern, you have to create your own pattern. If you can't just straight up replicate it. True. Okay. I got Are you good? Your eyebrows good? <laughs> I got stuck lost in the mirror. Okay, so Can I show my Valentine's Day gift? Yes. <laughs> it has nothing to do with knitting and sewing. It will kind of go in order of importance of what I got. Hold on. I gotta reach over. You guys. Do you like 90s angst? <laughs> Who doesn't live in <coughs> 90s angst? I got all the Funko Pops of the Creek. This one's the most important and the complete series of no, Dawson's wait, wait. Creek. Bring what back the Creek. What is this? This is Pacey Woodard, Joshua Jackson. This is when I confirmed in my head and my heart that I knew I was gay growing up. <laughs> because I saw Pacey and watched Dawson's Creek and there was no question around it that I was a gay man boy. Okay. Yeah, so uh, no, just a little fun gift that Chip got me, uh, the Dawson's Creek Complete Series, which... Not when, on his Amazon wish list, but available on Amazon. Very true. When I uh, watch this sometimes downstairs on a weekend morning, he comes down and goes, what is this? But yet he bought me the Complete Series. Because Thank I you. knew it would make you happy. It does make me happy. And I think it's hilarious that you now have... Okay, yet another... And I, yes, I realize I'm supporting you. Yet another Joshua Jackson paraphernalia in the house. It's not like I have posters and shrines and stuff. He has a poster on the back of his bathroom door. <laughs> that's a total lie. No, it doesn't. I was like, that's a total lie. I have a keychain that our uh, guest house key is on. If anybody comes over and needs our guest key. And that's it, I think. No, there's something else. What? Wasn't there? I have a strand of his hair next to the bed. No, you don't. <laughs> Thank you. I think they thought I was kidding as well. Um, was it my turn for what are you making? Uh, it's going to be a longer episode yes, than normal. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, back to the stash busting. Uh, a couple weeks ago, a month ago, Arne and Carlos had a sale on patterns. I was trying to look for something to stash bust and they had the Primrose Crochet Throw. I was like, this looks like something I can stash bust. And I started making them. And this is all my scrap yarn. So if you have like little balls of scrap yarn, that will work. If you have half skeins, anything like that, 
This is a mix of acrylic, wool, everything that I don't know what to do with. And here's an example. You, it's a treble crochet, which I have never done before. And this is gonna take a long, long time because you have to get, I think I have a hundred now. And I think some of these blankets are like 500 you have to make of these. So I made opposites of every single one I've done. So if you notice, this is the brown outside and this is the brown inside. So this is the this negative. The, the negative, yes, the negative all. So uh, you travel crochet. It's a paid for pattern, $2.99. Uh, it was $2.99 on sale. I don't know how much it is when it's not on sale. But then after I bought it, I was doing more research on YouTube. And there's a lady who tells you everything you could do for free. But you know what? My we'll money went both. somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so if you don't want to pay for the pattern, just figure out how to do it. If you have tons of scrap yarn. So you just make a ton of these. Then eventually you want to make an outer ring like, and link them together. So this right here is basically this. And then you make an outer ring and you link together here and here. And then you're just gonna link them all together and they also have the, I guess, binding or whatever, the end of the blanket is gonna be linking it here. Oh. Yeah, so it's all gonna, sorry, that's all I wanna Oh, I right like there. this one. I love that one. This color right here and this color. This is ochre? Are my jam, ochre. Yes, this is ochre and this is, I don't know what it is, but this is glorious. It's really, really pretty. But I've made all these so far. Oh, one just bit it. And they're all just unique, individual. When I first started making this, I just realized, I was like, this is going to be insanely dark because I was doing all my grays and stuff. Then I kind of just dig, dug deep further. And yeah, some of them are not winners. Like, I don't think this one's necessarily uh, a it'll winner. It'll blend. But it'll blend in. But I'm excited. To, I want to put them together, but Chip says no. No, wait until you, you wait. have a bunch more together, but yeah, so that it that you can some halves. You, you have still choices to make. Choices. So yeah, I'm very excited to kind of get this all going. It's it's not a quick project, and right now I'm almost out of kind of scrap yarn. So this so, almost looks like Grandma's Garden. I don't know what that means. It's a, a quilt pattern. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, but again, this is the primrose pattern. Arne and Carlos have it on their site, or we'll try to link the free one on YouTube because that's what we do here at Fiber Hustle. But I'm excited to put it together and someday, now, our, I don't, it's not gonna be a queen size or anything like that. I just want something that, that could, yes. Now, that's, question for you, are you going to, could you, if you wanted to, have a big one? Excuse me? No, just like, like these are all, basically the same size yes so i am using all worsted or dk weight and i'm using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook no that's not i point. get to the the diameter the size they're all about the same size are you going to do maybe one that's this big you didn't let me finish oh <laughs> if you want to get one that's that big but still kind of have it compact you can probably do Aaron weight and stuff like that and go up to maybe a five hook or a six hook but if you, if you took fingering weight and did like a six hook, it's just going to look like a, a doily or something like that. So you, you need thicker yarn, the bigger you're going to make it. Do you? I think you do. Am I the idiot? I, I don't know. It just matters. I mean, like, I'm just thinking like if you're doing a color story, you could have one big one. Oh, uh, okay. So you want... So like... I mean, you, you could. You could have one with several colors that's big... Like a big round middle and then everything builds off of that. Or like just three of them. Yeah. Other than that, uh, my last thing I am working on is I, w I got some, uh, what is it? Sh uh, what is it called? Shibui Knits uh, Staccato Fingering Weight Yarn that was on clearance. And they had a bunch of different colors. I got some colors that went together it's a fingering weight and I decided to make the Stephen West chevron shenanigan shawl I don't know how well it's going to show up that's a lot of alliteration that chevron shenanigan shawl mm -hmm. yes and by Shibui by, no it's by Stephen West but oh. the yarn is Shibui so this right is now Shibui staccato yes go <laughs> Shibui Shamil Shamazel Shibui staccato yeah 
Chevron Shenanigan Shaw. There you go. Shibui Staccato Chevron Shenanigan Shaw. There you go. <laughs> By the seashore. The Eshes have it. <laughs> the Eshes has it. Have it. Yeah. So I am making the Stephen West pattern. It's a Chevron Shenanigans. It usually calls for four skeins of like 400 yards of um, fingering weight. These skeins are only 191 yards. But I got enough of them so that they're all going to kind of go together. Here's another Very blue. Pretty. Here's another blue. Is that the same blue? Uh, no, that's a different blue. This has more green. This yeah. blue has more green Just in like it. Just like this has more gray in so it. So this, you guys can't really see this. It looks gray in the, in the monitor. But this is actually more of a, um, a soft purple. Yes. Oops, sorry, oh. <laughs> they're, all, they're going everywhere. There we go. But yeah, so I am making that. This pattern, oh, I have not said the F word so many times in my life. For some reason, it took me seven attempts to get to, it doesn't have wedges. So it's like wedge one, wedge two, wedge three, wedge four. Blah. To begin with. To begin with. To be fair. Um, no, no. In the beginning... You were spitting nails. Yeah. As it started growing That's, and the yes. changes. Yes, it got better. But the first... As it often does. The first few rows, I'm just like, I don't understand. I'm not seeing the pattern mentally yet. It just didn't make sense. And I ripped it out literally six times. Then I started putting this yellow as lifelines because I ripped it out so many times. So if you attempt this, Godspeed. No, just give it a chance, go as slow as possible. There's a lot of different stitches in here. It's paid for, so I can't, I can tell you some things that I do, but I can't tell you where, obviously. But there is some things that you have to pick a stitch up from like a row below, which I've never done before. There's uh, a different way to knit two together than bring it over. You can't do this on a Tuesday. You can only do this after midnight. It's that kind of pattern. But again, once it gets going and revved up, it's much better. Just take your time and r even write it all out because sometimes the first few lines, it's like a line, line, line. You're like, wait, here I am that says repeat this. So it might help just to actually write out the whole thing in one straight row so you're following it this way instead of following it this way. So I think I'm going to love it, but this is where I am so far. So to begin so with, far. the frequency of the changes was often. Yeah. And then as it's growing... Not color changes, it's just changes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm excited about it. No, I love... I love I'm the changing colors. whenever I want to change. So I love the colors following. that you're, you've chosen. They're unsurprising. Or they're surprising. Oh, okay. They're a softer side of Sears, pretty much. It's a softer me. Uh, uh, not Eastery, but are they pastels, kind of? It's spring. It's It's, it's spring. But yeah, it was. I think it's a limit. I think they said limited edition on them. The Shibui. Yeah. Well, this one said limited edition color. Some of them don't say it. But so I knew what the color names were when I was winding them. I uh, kind of tied them around. I took the yarn. Tied ooh, it this one's here. Riviera. So ooh, delicious. So yeah, that's what I'm making. And Riviera. again, once you get going, it's. It's going to be fine. It just took me a while to get going on this one for some reason. Cool. Yeah. And that's all I think I have. Did you have any have to have it? Anything mm. you're new in your life that you had to have? No. This is my last kind of had to have it. And I st right when I brought it home two days later, I started working on the shawl. Trying to think what else. Uh, we got Vogue Knitting Live here coming to Seattle in a few weeks, which is right down the street from our house. So we will be there one day. Now, we just uh, yesterday, last weekend of February. So yesterday, how did we spend the 29th of February? We went to the Sew and Stitchery Expo in Puyallup, Washington. This was our third year going. Yes. Yeah, this is our third year going. And it's kind of fun because now we've been in, in there enough to say, oh, we kind of remember where the vendors that we like, where they're, they're going to be because they've already signed up for the next year. They already have the layout for the following year. 
So it's kind of nice. We go in, we know what, I have an agenda, I know exactly what I'm looking for. So on this, oh, and actually we saw um, Janine. Yes, we saw Janine from Yarn and You podcast, and she has Yarn and You yarn for sale. I love her colors. And she was there, and she'll actually be at Vogue Knitting Live as well. So, Janine, it was very nice seeing you. I felt terribly that I was keeping you. Like, you're there, and you're there to make money. So, we love you, but we didn't want to. We don't want to spoil things. Get in for your you. way. Yeah. So, okay. So, one of the things on my list was for those of you who have quilted. Let's say you have a block, and even if it's all nicely pressed, you want your, you're going to be floating across the quilt as you're quilting. So the quilt top, and there's actually different ridges here. So my quilting foot will actually... Quilting foot just pops right in there, and it's nothing more than a cup, and it'll allow it to just glide over because it's a rounded surface, rather than having a, these I've had already, these are also, um, these are also quilting feet. This allows you to measure how far it is, so you'll, you know from here to the edge is uh, I believe a quarter inch, and so we'll go with that. I could be wrong. Uh, it's a quarter inch, so you're using these markers to help you decide how far away you need to come when you're actually going through and quilting. But, see, the, this has a hard edge, and you could actually get stuck. And so what this will do is just glide over. So you just want to you want to be able to glide over and not have it catch, so this is a new um, clip that is, or a quilting foot attachment uh, that just came out this year. And so that was on sale, it was on my wish list. That was purchase number one. And I think I got like 15% off. That's nice. Which is good. That'll come in handy. All right, so then, Second thing, um, I got, uh, I already said that one pattern that you liked in yeah. the red and white quilt. So they have, uh, AccuQuilt actually has another block on board. So it's basically all the dies are, that all the dies that you'll need to make that block and cut out are all on one board. And so for that one that looked like kind of like shamrocks almost or something like that. Mm -hmm. So... I got that plus two more dies that are, um, one is a camper and then another one is an owl and the owl one can, cool. it's so versatile. So you can make a pig out of it. You can make a sheep out of it. Um, the owl, a frog, they say a cow, a cow or cow. We don't make cowls. We make cows. Moo. <laughs> yeah. So I was say it's something. Oh, a frog. Owl. So you can make raccoon. All the, all, a raccoon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go, name all the animals you can do. Yeah, so it's it's a great die that I can make um, a baby quilt for. So uh, there's a coworker who I want to make a baby quilt for. So I got those two dies, the camper, which is an applique. Um, I think that one would be fun. And then I met the lady who is actually kind of local. She's from Paulsbo, and she had a sample of this quilt. This is that exact quilt. And I looked at it, and I was like, oh, my God, that's really pretty. And so I bought the pattern from her. Each one of these little points here the, in the middle are all turned. So it's, it's, I know it's a technique. I don't know that technique. And it was like, oh, okay, let me support her. She was a very nice lady. Um, she is Scandinavian. Her shop is called, well, actually, it's Beatrix, uh, Beatrice Marks Quilt Design. And it says here Kingston, which is um, in Paulsbo. So this right now is not like 
Her shop, I think it was called The Quilt Shop, if I yeah, remember. Yeah, it was very, you know, she's like, oh, we're right by the water. You know, and she was just, it sounded like very quaint little village um, where the shop was located. I'm like, I want to be sewn by the water. <laughs> she got visitors sometimes. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, we did get to meet the AccuQuilt, uh, or meet up with the AccuQuilt uh, ladies yet again. Uh, Nikki and Pam, which, very gracious very lovely women. I don't know how they travel. One of them was like, oh yeah, I'm on, I do 42 trips a year for work. And I'm like, geez, that's a lot. Mom was a rolling stone. Um, and it's Pam who, if you ever go to AccuQuilt's web, uh, YouTube channel and you're um, trying to learn and like, oh, how do I make this? Like it's often, she's one of their educators, lovely woman. Found out that her husband is a tattoo artist. So whenever I do the uh, the sleeve on here of a... Her son. Uh, what did I say? Husband. No, it's her son. Yeah. Um, her son is a tattoo artist. And so she goes, get an Alaska Airlines 260. Come over. I'll take you. You get your tattoo. Then I'll take you to AccuQuilt. I'm like, ooh, I can make a pilgrimage out of it. Where are they? <laughs> Omaha? They're in, they're in Nebraska. Yeah. Nebraska. Or... Yep. So, and then Nikki, she's another educator. And I just, I just love just like talking to them because it's like AccuQuilt, yes, it is a product, but I feel like they're one of those few companies that actually is interested in what their customers are doing. So it's like, I know I've had one of my quilts featured on, like I just tagged them and are like, oh, they liked it that much that they put it on their Instagram. Yeah. So it's like, they're, I feel like they're connected with um, their customers and like that's, I'm not paid by them, but it's a nice te it's a nice testimony, and I feel good giving them my money. Yeah, yeah, and you do, and I do. So got that, and then the last had to have it. I finally, it's a big one. Have got um, my cabinet ordered. So I ordered the kangaroo and Joey, so that my and I order it in the ash white, that has the same finish as my Q20 desk. And so it's got like this little cabinet they call the Joey because it slides in and fits in underneath. Um, it's got the drawers and then this pops down. It's not, it's not hydraulic. It's actually push down, push down spring or whatever. And it's going to fit perfect. It's got 42, I think 42 inches from front to back 55 inches this way. So it's perfect in the area that I'm going to be. And it'll be so much to me, it's a luxury to be able to have my quilting surface flush with the table surface. So that like if I'm making something like as the quilt grows, you know, like if you're up here and then the table's here, you're just wrangling and you're hoping that nothing gets caught. So this um, was like the one thing that I knew we're always gonna have better sales um, during the expos and so now is the time. Nice. Comes with um, the light too, so it's got one of the LED slim slimline like um, pole. Pole, and so like it's got two um, goose neck points, so that you can kind of flex it here, flex it here, and then the arm comes down right in front of your sight line, and it just like it blows the light up. And you know, as quilters and even knitters. You can never get enough light. It's true. Um, so I'm very excited. It's going to come in, I guess, in a couple of weeks. And then until then. <laughs> you have to sew on your old table. I oh, have to no. sew on my old table. But that gives me time to like figure out, okay, are we going to put it on Facebook Marketplace? Do we want Oh, your old desk. Do we want to fool with that? Do we want to give it away on Buy Nothing? I don't know what we want to do. And we're thinking about... We live in a split level, so we have this living area, we have the downstairs living area, and maybe moving We're the entire studio, what, meaning knitting, all sewing materials, and podcast materials downstairs into the living room. So, so you so, want a, a craft studio downstairs that we can do it all in one place, but you can have a massage chair. Yes, I would love a massage chair. Oh my gosh, that would be so nice. But it'd be nice just to not have to take this stuff up and down all the time. Yeah. A lot of work goes into 
I, I know a lot of people just throw the iPhone up, which is great. You know, totally works for them. But we're nerds. We but like Zach has a ring light. <laughs> Zach has a ring he has like, this big We like to edit chair. stuff. And he has his, <laughs> his thing behind him. That's Zach. But you know who would know? The wool patch. The, yes, Stuart. Stuart the word patch. He's got to get Mr. Sexy up. Mr. Hunk. Mr. Hunk. His little... He's got to get man. Anya there. He's got to get Anya there. He sets up his light. He's got two cameras now. And he is making Stuart. me want to be a better editor. Stuart, your, your editing game is... It is. I hear about it all the time. Stuart's doing this. Stuart's doing that. I'm like, okay, I'll work on and it. And he's also flexing and his hair's growing. <sighs> Stuart's just amazing. He is. I like them both. But watch him so. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart. Stuart, we're just kidding. A little ribbon. A little Aww. American ribbon for you. Okay. That's all I have. Okay, so that's all we got. And. I think that's it. That's it. We'll see you soon. We'll I mean, see you soon. We're not going to make any promises.